Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now there are a few ways to buy used products on Amazon. The first is to find what you want and see if a third party user is selling it cheaper. The second is to look on Amazon warehouse deals for discounts on customer returns and open box items. And the third is through Amazon Renewed where you'll find refurbished goods that look and work like new, according to Amazon anyway. That section of the site is where I found this, the cheapest PC with Windows 10 for less than £60. So let's see what we've got and check out if we are actually getting a quality product as described. First impressions are good. The system is well packaged and the first thing I pulled out of the box was a power cable which is always handy of course, as well as a USB Wi-Fi dongle. Again, a nice bonus. Anyone can sell through Amazon Renewed providing they meet certain standards and the Optiplex machine I went for was from a company selling through the site. This Dell 7010 or 7010 cost me £58 and for the money we should be getting a Core i3 processor, 8GB of RAM and a 250GB hard drive all wrapped up in a super clean and dirt free chassis. The outside of the system is certainly clean with a few marks here and there but it's rare to find these often abused ex office machines in pristine condition and this is definitely one of the tidiest ones I've seen. But what about the inside? As much as I enjoy using it, I don't want to actually get the electric air duster out and wake everyone up at half past eight on this beautiful Sunday morning, especially when we're all going to be up late tonight after England win the final of the Euros later. Sorry, I couldn't help it. I've got a bad feeling I'm going to regret saying that tomorrow. If you're watching this tomorrow in England have lost, well, don't I look silly. <laughs> Much to my satisfaction, this computer is damn near spotless with even the front intake fan completely clear of any dust. I've bought plenty of these Optiplex systems second hand over the years and this is most definitely an unusual sight. Although by default this PC relies on the integrated graphics to output a display, the 80 plus gold rated 240 watt PSU means there is room for a GPU upgrade even if we are actually a little short on physical room for a graphics card but we'll be seeing what we can squeeze in here a little later on in the video. I had no doubt that this machine would work without any issues. Let's assume a nuclear blast went off tomorrow. Only a handful of tech would survive the aftermath, but I'm pretty certain that included among the fallout would be a plethora of Nokia 3310s and anything from the Optiplex lineup. Because this shipped with Windows 10 Pro, I was curious to see if it was a clean install or whether we'd have a lot of extras that we don't really want. After running the initial setup, I found that an aftermarket antivirus software was installed as well as Team Viewer. It's all down to personal choice whether or not you keep programs like this installed, of course, but call me old fashioned or naive, but I prefer relying on the built in Windows security dashboard and I always remove pretty much everything that isn't included by default with used machines that have Windows 10. Sometimes I might remove even more than that. I like to take Windows 10 down to the absolute bare bones when I'm using it and that pretty much means deleting everything from the start menu as well. We're also lacking a few OS updates but it doesn't really matter too much because these can be installed either during or after configuring Windows 10 on first boot but I suppose it would have been nice if this was all taken care of especially for those people who want to take it straight out of the box and begin using it which you can of course still do but you'll have to do the update sooner or later. After updating the PC and taking a look in Device Manager to check that all the drivers were installed, I noticed that we actually had an i3-3240 instead of the 3220 that was listed on Amazon, which is a nice little bonus. It's a 100 megahertz speed difference, but it's free, so I'll take it. These Ivy Bridge chips have certainly stood the test of time and even the i3s are still good enough for everyday use and some gaming. For less than £60 I'm pretty happy with my purchase. If I purchased a similar PC online elsewhere for this money I can guarantee it wouldn't have been this clean. 
You might also find that a computer like this makes for a good place to start if you're looking for a cheap gaming system. Now there aren't many cards that can fit in here, but Gigabyte's low profile GT1030, which ships with a half height bracket, is a good choice. Passive and full height cards won't fit, but this one will. I picked this model up second hand on eBay for £55, and it only came with the low profile bracket, which is no big deal because we have a low profile system here and slapping it in our 7010 will make a world of difference to its 3D application performance. Intel HD graphics are fine for basic games but the GT1030 is a game changer for these old compact systems and it won't give the 240 watt PSU any problems thanks to its low power requirements. Every game will perform differently but despite the improved performance, there's no doubt that this system is often CPU limited no matter what you are playing. Thankfully, the processor can be upgraded to an i3, i3? I was going to say i3, it's already got an i3, to an i5 or i7, I believe. And only then would it make sense trying to find a slightly higher end card that could fit in here. There may be a couple of 1050s or 1050 Ti's that will work. Possibly a 1650 of some sort, but that's if the Dell BIOS actually supports it, as I've heard that these may have some compatibility issues with the newer uh, 1600 GPUs. Still, upgrading the i3 to an i5 wouldn't hurt, especially when it comes to productivity, as four physical cores will fare much better. With that being said though, the main purpose of this video was to see what we'd get if we bought the cheapest Amazon Renewed PC on the website. Annoyingly, the price that I paid has actually changed and this system has gone up to around £75 now on Amazon UK, but the thing is there are plenty of desktops available at reduced prices and from what I've experienced firsthand today, you will certainly be getting a better quality item than you would from the warehouse deals section of the site, even if you will have to play play. What is wrong with my speaking today? Even if you have to pay, pay, P-A-Y, slightly more. So there we go. I thought I'd take a look at uh, what was, at the time of purchasing, one of the cheapest Amazon renewed PCs on the site. If you are looking for a bargain, it may be worth checking out. This whole video has absolutely reeked of sponsorship. Uh, I don't like that. This isn't sponsored in any way by Amazon. I should clarify that now. Amazon are not paying me a penny. Uh, in fact, I'm paying them because I actually bought this with my own money. So there we go. But if you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. To my Italian subscribers, it's going to be an interesting night, isn't it? But uh, I'm sure, yeah, I've got a bad feeling about <laughs> about later on. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.